Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Now, yesterday I made a very important announcement on this channel and the announcement was that I had negotiated with my wife that at $10 XRP, I was never going to unload the dishwasher again. C3 Nick has made a great suggestion and I think this will solve the problem because it, it'll be, uh, I will easily be able to afford this second dishwasher that he, that he explains how we, I can never unload the dishwasher again here. Um, he says, uh, how do you, <laughs> how you do not have to unload the dishwasher ever again? Buy two dishwashers, you just take the clean dishes on demand and put them into the other one after you've, you've used them and you do not need cabinets anymore. That's how I like to optimize things. So I like to see how, how people's brains work and I think this is a genius idea. And when XRP is at $10, there's no reason in the world that my mansion cannot have two and maybe three dishwashers. And so I appreciate the idea. Okay, um, there's some really good stuff out today. Um, okay, first got this from XRP Daddy, at XRP underscore Daddy sent me this. now. I received this from about 10 different people when the announcement came out yesterday. It was this one of those pieces of news that's that important. And so this, but what I, the way I always do this, I give credit to the, the first guy that I see it from, and that was XRP Daddy. So it's from about Eris X. Our DCO license is the next step in the Eric S's evolution and mission to improve the digital asset space. We worked collaboratively with the CFTC to establish a clearinghouse guided by proven regulatory frameworks that protect participants and market integrity. Now, the point I wanted to make is the, there's three or four um, there's three or four digital asset exchanges that are imminently coming in and are at various stages of being live, including ErisX. Then you have Fidelity Digital Assets, and then you have um, of course, BACT, which is the New York Stock Exchange, it, their exchange. All of these are at various stages of being able to uh, do different things in digital assets. I think the final stage of licensure, <coughs> excuse me, that ErisX um, is going for is the one that will allow them to custody these digital assets. But um, there's a video, and I think that it was overlooked, that I found when I went to their website. It's this video. What I'm about to tell you is very exciting. This this really puts it all together. But this guy, this guy right here, let me see if I can find get what his name was. Let me get this going again. Hold on. Um, he is. It shows up his name here in a sec. There it is Chief Strategy Officer for Eris X. Okay, and his uh, name is Matt Trudeau. Well, he's being interviewed by this Nasdaq reporter. Now remember. Uh, the investors in Arisec, two of the investors, one's NASDAQ and one is TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade has already said that through Arisec, they're going to open up digital assets to their 11 million or so retail customers. All right. Now, what's, in, what's interesting, he, he tells you if in the first part of this, he talks about um, the, there's two or three uh, different levels of, of regulation that they're trying to get approval on. This was one of, I think, three or, or two of three. Um, but that's not the part that's exciting. If you go in this video to around, I believe it was around 235, this is what it's all about. This is what affects you and me. He tells you what the Wall Street plan is when you get to 235, folks. And all of you need to go and watch this. You can get this at Eric's at, at Eric's underscore digital. Go to 235. Now, I've said on this channel many times, those of you that don't know, the over-the-counter market is does not show up in retail. When you go to coin market cap and you see the market down, you might have record buying going on in the over-the-counter market, which is where the wealthy people and the wealthy institutions are doing their buying. 
That's what we saw all of 2018 is wealthy, the wealthy institutions and the wealthy people buying in the over-the-counter market. Make no mistake about it. This world is geared for the wealthy, or at least the financial world is geared for the wealthy. It is, they've had their own racket for centuries, and that's not going to change. But mark my words, and he says it in this video. He says, as you begin to see these, and he didn't use the term legitimate, but I'll tell you what the real deal is. As you begin, what he was making the point that at what you're about to start seeing as these legitimate as these legitimate traditional Wall Street firms create their crypto exchanges like BACT, Fidelity Digital Assets, as you begin to see them come online, you're, he says it. He says you're going to start to see that over-the-counter trade, and, and it's going to be under the guy, oh, well, this is, now it's all legitimate. But what it's really about, folks, is the over-the-counter people, they've been parking their money to get ready for this switch. And he tells you, he comes out and tells you, Here's the switch. They're, that over-the-counter money, all of a sudden, there's going to be a shift to where the, the uh, buying and selling is going to be done on these. Now, can, now to, the public will be told, this, these are the legitimate exchanges. Now crypto is legitimate. Back, Fidelity Digital Assets, TD Ameritrade is going to open up to their people. Aerosex, all of these that are tied to Wall Street, you're going to begin to see Wall Street come out, and, and that's when you're going to see the commercials. That's when you're going to see, okay, now crypto is a legitimate thing, and that's when they are going to make the transition from over the counter, and all of a sudden, the the real that's when the real money is going to be made. That's on the Wall. That's when they're going to tell all of their customers, okay. Now you have these legitimate exchanges where it's safe for you to come in. The water's nice and warm, and they've all been sitting there. They've all bought theirs over the counter where it didn't affect the market, where, it, where the market didn't run up too early for them. It's a rigged game, folks. It always has been for the wealthy. There's a re you know, the, 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 you've heard the saying a thousand times in your life, uh, the rich get richer. Well, there's a reason for that. The system gets set up so that the rich can keep getting richer. I've told you before, when I was a financial advisor, there's a reason that when they had IPOs that were coming out, those are offered to the wealthy clients first so that they can have their money in before these things get open to the public. That's the way it's always been done. And make no mistake, the over-the-counter market, the whole design of it is for that. Um, and so... But he comes out, I really encourage you to go watch this, at 2.35, go listen to him, hear it out of his own mouth. And, and what he doesn't come out and say it the way I just said it. He's like, well, we're going to have, you know, we'll then have some, you know, custodial, we'll be able to custody this, it'll be safe, and da-da-da-da-da. But he's saying it in so many words, they're going to make that shift from over-the-counter to retail, and they're going to do it once they're all set up. And you mark my words. That's when you're going to see CNBC cheerleading for this like you've never seen in your life. And that, but, but for those of us that don't buy over the counter, all we can do while this market is going down like this and, and going through the phases that it's going through right now is either, either get it on our letter, ledger nano S's and hold it safely or, or buy the dips, which is what I, I do every, almost every day I'm buying these dips. I love it because I, I this guy told, tells you point blank what is about to happen. All right, enough on that. Okay, while I was on AirSex's feed, I also saw that they had retweeted this. This is TD Ameritrade tweeting this out. The expert-packed crypto panel is happening right now. A great discussion about digital assets and how they're impacting investors. I mean, folks, they're telling you right here. This, how could you be in a better point in his investing history than right now? Because they're telling you right here, they're on stage telling you that, that this is a thing and that, and that they're coming. When they come, it'll be too late, okay, when, when they're here. <clears throat> the money these guys have positioned, they have to be, I bet, behind the scenes that they are about as giddy as they can be. In fact, I'm going to use this as a thumbnail and put XRP under this. I don't know if TD Ameritrade is going to open and, and have XRP available. They might, though. Um, so, anyway. All right, next. Uh, this is funny right here from XRP Big Time. At X Big Time. 
Watch Nuriel Ravini lose his mind calling crypto shit coins on live TV when this Bloomberg reporter asks him about Bitcoin. By the way, he is at the 2019 blockchain conference in Taipei. You mad, bro? Why is the guy going to blockchain conferences if, if, it's, if he thinks it's so awful? Shouldn't he be at gold conferences or are there not, a, not enough people there to listen to him? <laughs> That's the question. Okay, uh, Mike Preston, at Mike Preston, uh, CW12 sent me this. Um, and this is, this is really interesting right here. Um, this tells you a lot right here. This is a tweet from Brad Garlinghouse, um, and it's from yesterday. He says, in 2015, long before the headlines and white papers, Anna Boten, she's, she's from uh, Santander, Banco Santander. Uh, she identified digital first companies as a threat to banks as opposed to other banks. So interesting to see who heeded her prediction and who is now scrambling to get with the times. Now, this is from the Financial Times, and it's her quote. If you think about the big guys now, it's not the banks. It is these four large tech companies that are worth more than us. They have more cash. They have less regulation. Now, this is what's interesting. Ms. Boten refers to Apple, Facebook, Google, and Amazon as the big four guys and admits they pose a threat, albeit one she thinks banks are well equipped to see off. If you think about the big guys now, it's not the big banks. And this is her quote. So I want to make a point here, though, folks. I want to make a point that I think cannot be overlooked. <clears throat> Does it not look like Ripple is is and Brad Garlinghouse are, are positioning themselves to be the saving grace for the banking system and the central banks? Does, is that not what this looks like? Now, remember, when this Facebook announcement came came up, Congress went crazy. Everybody went crazy. And at that time, I said, don't think you're just going to see a digital asset being launched from Facebook. It's going to be Apple, Google, Amazon, all of them. And it will be. I believe that the level playing field that we keep hearing about, I believe Ripple is what will help create that level playing field and, and help these banks and central banks compete with these juggernauts. And I believe that's why the congressional hearings are all irrelevant and they, and they probably know that behind the scenes. I believe Ripple is what help Ripple and XRP is what creates this level playing field. See, these guys, None of, there's only one company, there's one company that has been at this for seven years before anybody. They, they were at this when they didn't know if the government was going to kick their doors in. We heard that from Bob Way. They didn't kick their doors in. XRP Ripple has been going around the world to central bankers and banks, the largest in the world. And they've been doing their thing for all this time. You have to ask yourself the question, was this has this all been a plan behind the scenes to keep the banks and the banking system relevant in the, as we go into this new world order? That's the question. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends, friends and family that I believe that Ripple and XRP are the saviors of these, the, the central banks and the banks that will help them transition and compete in this new system. But the irony is the new system will be, be better for us all as a result of this. Thank you for listening.